served in our military and uh, are a veteran. Would you please stand for us this morning? There we go. Y'all don't be shy now. There we go. All right. Thank you so much. I want to uh, say that we greatly appreciate you. And, uh, Amen. Uh, we couldn't have the things that we have today without it. And uh, I'm very thankful uh, for those men and women who have served our country. Thank you so much. Uh, with that being said, let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 9. Romans <coughs> chapter 9. We're going to finish up Romans chapter 9 today. Um, we're going from a very complicated, uh, uh, delicate uh, uh, subject matter last week to it's about as simple as it gets this week. And, and that's a good thing for me because I'm a simple type of fellow. But luckily for me and luckily for all of us, salvation is simple. Amen. Uh, salvation is not this uh, uh, complicated uh, uh, misunderstood, uh, hard to grasp and comprehend thing. Salvation is simple. It's so simple, in fact, that a child can do it. Amen. It's so simple, in fact, that a child who really doesn't know anything can do it. Salvation is freely given. With that being said, before we jump into uh, today, let's do just sort of a little bit of a recap of last week, and, and it's important for us to understand so that we can look at, at what we're looking at. Last week we talked about whosoever, didn't we? We talked about whosoever believes on Jesus Christ can be saved. Anyone who professes Jesus Christ will be saved. If you uh, uh, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter your uh, 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 your, your height, your weight, your uh, race, your uh, 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 ethnicity, whatever, those same things that you get what I'm saying, it doesn't matter. Jesus died for all. Amen. So then how does faith, or rather how does salvation come about? The title of our message is nothing more than faith. Mm -hmm. Nothing more than faith. That's how salvation comes to be. Simple as it gets, folks. Nothing more than faith. Verse 30 of Romans chapter 9. says, What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion, or Zion, a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Let's have a word of prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you so very grateful, Lord, for salvation. So very thankful, Lord, for the simplicity of it. So very thankful, Lord, for your grace, which through it, by my faith, has cleansed my soul. Lord, I ask that you just be with us here today, that you would bless the preaching of your word where, wherever it's being preached this morning. And Lord, I ask that you would just go with us through the remainder of this service, that we'd be found doing your will in all things. And it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. This passage of Scripture is talking about, this is something that's very uh, uh, important, not only to, to God, because God has it in His Word, but it's important to Paul, who is writing this, this uh, in Romans here. If we look back at the first five verses of Romans chapter 9, we see what we talked about and what the sermon was titled was having a burden for lost souls. And we were it's Paul writing, and he is broken hearted over his kinsmen, his people, the Israelites. And you know, he's a Jew, Paul, and, and he's broken over the, the, the Jewish people have rejected Jesus Christ. And he's hurt 
and, 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 and he, he even goes as far to say, do you remember what he went as far to say? That I would take your place if it meant that you would come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. He's that broken over it. And so he goes through, and we looked last week, and we won't rehash it, but now he gets, he says, well, what shall we say then? Because the Jews and the Gentiles, now the, 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 the gospel was presented to who first? First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Why was it presented that way? Well, we know that the Jews were God's own people. God's chosen people. And I know I've said this before, but don't let you... Anybody tell you that that's changed at all? That the, uh, the nation Amen. of Israel is still God's chosen people. And, and today, this very day, and, and the gospel was presented to the Jews. By whole, they rejected it. Am I saying that there's no uh, Jews that know Jesus Christ? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, in our very own community, we have a, a Jewish man who is a pastor of a missionary Baptist church over there in Enon. Uh, Brother Michael Stroh, he's a, he's a, uh, uh, and he, he's got some knowledge. I'll tell yeah. you that. He he, he uh, grew up Jewish and, and uh, trusted Jesus Christ as his savior. And uh, uh, so, uh, but but anyway, uh, the Jews rejected the message of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Why? We'll get to it. Mm. But but the first verse here in verse thirty, we see. It says, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. I've got to read 31, but, but just so that we can understand 30, and then we'll come back to 31, okay? Y'all just follow. If you get lost, just stay with me. Then verse 31 says, but Israel, so but the Jews, but God's own people, which followed after the law of righteousness, Hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Put yourself in the position of a Jew. A first century Jew. You're God's chosen people, right? You, uh, your lineage goes all the way back. And, and you can look back and you can see. And, and, and uh, you've heard stories and you've read about Moses. About how God... The, the, the God of Israel delivered people out of the bondage of Egypt. How Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. How Moses let God's people, me, myself, I'm part of God's people, let us out of Egypt. And then they got to the Red Sea. Then he parted the Red Sea. He delivered them from Egypt. And then uh, you hear the not so good stuff, how they, they didn't trust the Lord and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. But yet even in that, God took care of them. Why? Because they're God's own people. I'm part of God's own people. We were given the law. The law wasn't given to those Gentiles. The law was given to us. We're special. There isn't any denying that, by the way. And, and uh, even in the 40 years, he took care of us. And then once the 40 years was over, Moses died. But God raised up Joshua. And, and, and we went into the land and we conquered people that we had no business even going up against. Why? Because we're special. God loves us. God took care of us. We are God's own people. And so you go on up to the point now. They've got the law. They are not law of the land by the people, but they are the law of God abiding people. They are righteous. They are, uh, they do what God, the, the, the law says, and by the way, we'll get to this a little bit later, but just tuck it in and, and keep it safe. We're coming to it for it. Uh, even add a few laws, perhaps, into uh, what God had just to make themselves even more holy. And they look at these Gentiles. Says, what shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? How could these Gentiles be claiming to be righteous 
though they do not follow the law of God. Does it make very much sense? I put myself in the seat of a first century Jew who believes that Jesus Christ was perhaps nothing more than a rebel rouser, a riot insider, uh, someone who maybe perhaps even practiced witchcraft, uh, who, 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 who was leading all these other good Jewish people astray. And I say, but where you get the, the, the uh, you get, where you get the righteousness is not in following or not following the law. Where you get your righteousness is there in the last word of uh, verse 30, and it is faith. Folks, there is no righteousness in anyone who is sitting in this room. There is no good in anybody that sit. I don't care what your mama or your grandmama said. There is no good in anybody that is here today. Except our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. That's it. And by the way, it, it's by the grace of God that we are even afforded that faith. On our own, on my own, I wouldn't have faith in God. On my own, I would never choose to follow God. On my own, but it's the grace of God that the glory of Christ hath appeared to all men. It, 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 it is nothing that we've done of ourselves, folks. Faith alone saves. Amen. Nothing but faith. So then, verse 31, we'll look at it again. We've got how the Gentiles believe they're righteous, right? It's by faith. Nothing more than faith. We got verse 31, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Hmm. What is the first problem with the law? So, so somebody, somebody, I, I need an answer. Somebody, what's the what's what's I would say the problem. What is our biggest problem with the law? Couldn't keep it. We couldn't keep it anyway. Now the biggest problem with the law is that is that even if you thought that, that that salvation came through practicing the law, keeping the law, folks, we couldn't do it. Plain and simple. But I'm a first century Jew and you can't convince me that I haven't kept the law all my life. I've done the good things. I've, I've, I've uh, uh, read the Torah. I've uh, studied what God's Word says. I've memorized these scriptures. I, I do the things I'm supposed to do. I don't do the things I'm not supposed to do. How am I being unrighteous? Nothing more than faith. There's a misconception. We've talked about it. But there's a misconception in the Old Testament. A lot of people, including Christians today at, at, at times, believe that in the Old Testament salvation came through doing the things of the law, keeping the law. Folks, salvation has never once ever Changed except for one minute little detail. And that little minute detail is before Jesus Christ came in the Old Testament, they were saved by grace through faith looking to the cross of Jesus Christ. And now, after Christ, today, we are saved by grace through faith looking back to the cross of Jesus Christ. That is the only detail that has changed about salvation from the days of sin entering into the world up until the return of Christ. 
Nothing more than faith. The law never once saved anyone. With that being said, folks, good works has yet to save anyone. Good works has yet to keep someone's salvation. Uh, kindness, kindness, goodness, uh, 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 being polite, being loving, going out of your way, being helpful, has yet to ever give someone eternal life. And here's the news flash for you, it never will. That's right. There's a misconception again in what, what, what good works are. Because we see when we're talking about faith, we see in the Bible, we are told very plainly, faith without works is dead. Dead. Non-existent. The misconception is, well, you, you, you have to do these good works in order to be saved. No. Your word is wrong. Mm -hmm. You're wording it wrong. How it ought to be is once you're saved, you can't help but do good works. Amen. Once you're saved, you should do that of the Father's will. What is the Father's will? The Father's will is that those who come to know Jesus Christ, uh, we could get into uh, uh, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, uh, Philippians, the, the letters to the churches, and we could see very plainly there's a lot of stuff that we as God's children ought to do. We ought to take care of the sick. We ought to take care of the widow. We ought to take care of uh, the, 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 the weak, the, the, the feeble. We ought to uh, build one another up. We ought to encourage one another. There's a lot of things, good things, that we ought to do. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you think that heaven is attained through those good works, I, I, I just tell you the title of this sermon again. Nothing more than faith. Amen. It's nothing more than faith. There is no other way to Jesus Christ, heaven above, and eternal life than through faith. And, and, and it goes without saying it, but I'll say it anyway. Faith in Jesus Christ alone. There is nothing else to put your faith in. A lot of people today put faith in their money. A lot of people today... Put faith in their good works. A lot of people today put faith in baptism. A lot of people today put faith in church attendance. A lot of people today put faith in whether they pray or not. A lot of people today put faith in if they read their Bible or know what it says. A lot of people today put their faith in, well, I get a devotional sent to my phone every day and I read it. <laughs> Folks, all those things are good. But there is no substitute for faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. So we've got the law. Let's look at verse 32 and 33. It says, wherefore? So, so back up. Verse 30 says that we've got the, uh, uh, the, the Gentiles have become this righteousness through faith, right? Roundabout, where we're paraphrasing. And then we've got the Jews, the, the Israel, who is saying that we did not attain righteousness. Though we went through the law and we did these things, how, how come they have it and we don't? Now, we look at verse 32. Wherefore or why? Because they sought it not by faith. They sought it not by faith. Faith. It's as clear as anything that's ever been stated before in the history of all of mankind. It's clearly saying that only faith will do. Okay? But as it were, by the works of the law, they sought to go after the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and the rock of offense. 
And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Let me ask you this question. Did God put this stumbling stone in front of him? I don't believe so. No. At all. I don't believe, as we talked last week, that God would hinder anyone from coming to salvation to Him. Matter of fact, if you read every page of the Old Testament, you can make an argument after the fall of man, I can make an argument first verse of Genesis 1-1. Jesus is on every page. Mm -hmm. If the people who study the law, study the Old Testament, truly would open their eyes, they'd see Jesus. So what is this stumbling block? If God didn't put it there, then who did? If God didn't put this stumbling block, then who did? Folks, we read it says, they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Did God not institute the law? Yeah. So, is it God's fault that they stumbled at this stumbling stone? No. God plainly told them all throughout that Jesus, there's going to be a Messiah come. There's going to be a Messiah come. This is what He's going to look like. If they had opened their eyes, they'd have seen it was Jesus. But guess what? They created their own stumbling stones. Remember we talked earlier about they may have even added a few things to the law? Got a little bit legalist, if you will. Got a little dogmatic about some things. Got a little bit staunch and uh, 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 hard about some things. I'll be the first to stand up here and tell you there are, uh, in the world that we live in today, I know there's some churches out there that may be a little loosey-goosey on some things. Uh, that's the best way I don't have to. There may be some preachers out there. Well, you know, you don't really want to take this stand too hard. You know, you may offend somebody or whatever the case may be. In the world that we live in today, there are things that I don't care what anybody else says. I will take that stand and I'll die on that hill. Plain and simple. Uh, you, you, there, there's things you got to take a stand on. Amen. By faith alone, nothing more than faith is one of them. Amen. And there, there, there is no uh, other faith. If you want to look at last week, whosoever is one of them that I will die on. That salvation only comes through faith in Jesus Christ is one I'm going to die on. Amen. But, am I going to stand here today? And listen, don't think I'm being ugly. I'm not. I promise. But am I going to stand here today and tell you that everything that Holly Springs does is 100% biblical? No. What do I mean by that? I mean, like we sing our two or three songs and then we do the what you call it and all of that sort of thing. We have Sunday school for uh, 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 preaching. Do you know that if, and you may be the one. Sorry if you get offended. <laughs> There'd be folks sure enough mad enough to leave the church if we decided to make Sunday school after preaching or something. There'd be folks sure enough mad enough to leave the church if the preacher decided not to wear a tie. Uh, they, I mean, they, they, there'd be people sure enough mad enough if uh, uh, we, we got rid of the pews and got chairs. Uh, are all of those things okay? Yeah, all of those things are okay. Have I been told by countless people, Fritz, you don't have to wear a tie. So yeah, I don't like wearing one on Sunday morning. I just did. I look nice once a week and then I go back to looking like a look. Okay? Uh, you can put lipstick on a pig once a week and then you're all right. So, uh, but I, I, I just like it. Um, uh, uh, pews, I love pews. Our chairs of Satan. No. Okay. Uh, you think Jesus and his church ever sat in a pew? Probably not. Uh, you know, uh, the songs that we sing, there's some songs out there that I don't like. There's some songs out there that I do like. Uh, there's some hymns that I do like, and there's some hymns that I don't like. 
Uh, but is it all right as long as we're honoring and glorifying Jesus Christ? Absolutely, I believe so. If Jesus Christ, if we're making a joyful noise unto the Lord and we are scriptural in what we're singing and God is being honored and glorified, it don't matter what you sing. Amen. What the tempo's like or any of that stuff. But, but, but I, and I'm not just doing this to bash any of the things we do. I like how we do things here. Personally, uh, I, I do. Uh, there's some things that all of us got our own preferences. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing that to bash the things that we do. I'm just simply stating things so that you can maybe see that there's been things that even if, if, you, if you didn't really know, you would think, well, that's the way it has to be done. Right? These first century Jews, these people who have lived by the law for so long, they've slowly added things that, yeah, it's not written, but if you don't do them or if you do do them, then, 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 then you're, you're, you're going against God. And that was simply not the case. Because what did they find Jesus of? Going against God. What, what was their ultimate, their, ultimately, what was their number one charge that they brought against him? Blasphemy. He's a blasphemer. But folks, if they'd have took their Bibles and opened them and read them, they'd have fell on their face and worshipped him. Folks, we put up stumbling blocks today for our sake. We put up stumbling blocks. This is one of the first times that you're going to hear a preacher say this, and maybe the last time. There are times where we are too easy on ourselves. Oh, man, that's not so bad. Man, that's not so bad. That's not a big deal. And there are times where we're too hard on ourselves, I believe, as well. There are times where we, as, as Christians, we, we, and what do I mean by, by too hard? Should I, am I saying that sins don't matter? No. But what I am saying is sometimes we will get in a state, or maybe it's before we're saved or even after, but, but either way, we have this sin in our life and maybe it's before salvation and you say, well, I've already done all these things, I can't be saved. Maybe it's after you've been saved. Say, well, yeah, but I'm saved, but now I went this way. And there ain't no way I can come back. Folks, you can't go so far that you cannot be repented back to God. You can't uh, sin so much as long as you got breath in your lungs to where you can't come to God. By faith. God doesn't put up stumbling blocks. <coughs> but we sure can. We can put up stumbling blocks. We can add to things. We can take away from things. Folks, you look at the world's, uh, the world's different religions uh, uh, that, that are going on. There's a lot that have been added to and taken away from these. Um. Uh, I believe, as far as Holly Springs Missionary Baptist Church goes, in Garnett, Arkansas, I believe we have salvation right. I believe, we believe and teach that salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. I believe that's right. I believe there ain't any other way. I believe, at the same time, that there's a lost world that needs to hear that. Hey. And, and, and we've got the message. We've got the truth. <coughs> let's, 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 I had it described one time, let's go around and kick stumbling blocks out of folks' way. <laughs> Not put them there. Because there's churches that put stumbling blocks up and, and, and I'm all for what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. But I also believe that we shouldn't be stumbling blocks to anybody else, especially when it comes to salvation. Jesus Christ loved. Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. Jew, Gentile, anything else. That pretty well covers it. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. So there you go. If you today 
Choose to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing more. Not and baptism. Not and good works. Because the sad thing is, folks, there are people who believe and they'll stand there and say, salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and good works. For salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and baptism. That is not the case. The title of our message says it as plain as I know how to say it. Nothing more than faith. Amen. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you've never put your faith in Him. Today you can have salvation through nothing more than faith. It is the grace of God that today, if you're here and you've never experienced salvation, that you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It is the grace of God that you have this opportunity today to choose faith in Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you leave, you will not be able to stand before God and say, well, it wasn't fair. I never had an opportunity. Because if you're here today, you have this, the same opportunity that anyone else here who is saved has had. If you're here today, you have, if this is your first, you say, well, maybe this, you know, it's the first time that I've ever felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You just want to get real about it. If it's your first time, it's one more than God owes us. It is the grace of God. And if you listen uh, to this message today and you understand that you're a sinner, that you need salvation through faith, maybe you've been being a good person to people. I'm here to tell you today, all of that is well and good. But all of that is in vain if you don't have faith and have your faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing more than faith will do.